we are <coughs> excuse me we're coming to a very interesting discussion now and uh, since we are great travelers all of us tra love to travel this is going to be an interesting discussion traveling trends for 2020 and the speaker is dr suborna bosch chairman international institute of hotel management before i request him to come onto the dais a few lines of introduction for him a brilliant chartered accountant with over 30 years of entrepreneurial experience in India and abroad, and the founder and chief mentor of Indie Smart Group, Dr. Shivana Bosch, launched management schools called Institute of Advanced Management in 1989 and founded International Institute of Hotel Management in 1994, uh, which is today regarded as one of the key leaders in the field of international hospitality management education in India. Dr. Shubhana Bosch has always believed that the best way for students to learn is through a combination of applying theory to practice and to facilitate this. He has enacted a strategy of open, opening hotels to work in conjunction with his hotel management schools. Ladies and gentlemen, dear delegates present here, please put your hands together as I invite Dr. Shubhana Bosch, Chairman of International Institute of Hotel Management, onto the stage. A warm welcome to you, sir. Very good afternoon, everybody, for those still on the hall. So uh, after this presentation by the Honorable Minister, uh, we're still carrying on with the tourism. It is quite interesting thing, actually, uh, what's the trends of the tourism 2020. So I'm basically going to talk about a little bit about the technology part, about how the technology is actually gearing the tourism, the growth, the development, <clears throat> and the ease of tourism. So much before the uh, world of artificial intelligence and IoT came into the world, uh, the technology was always there in some form. I, one of my very favorite example, which I gave here about five years back in one of the talk, has been uh, there's a hotel in London, uh, which was in a very good location, but the problem was that there was no window in the hotel room. So I don't know whether any one of you have stayed in any hotel without a window, hotel room without window. Have you? I don't know. So how it looks like staying in a hotel room without, it, it, look, it looks quite awful actually. So, but the point is that a research said that about 80% of the business executive and the travelers never look at the windows. They stay there, they go to the bathroom, they eat their breakfast, they never mind the windows. But the point is that the hotel was not doing well. So one of the hotel entrepreneur wanted to buy this hotel. It was a heritage building. So they couldn't make a window. It was in the Victoria area in London. So the hotel was sold to a very enterprising group of hospitality young people. So what they think is that what people see out a window they see what's in the road, right? When you are on a beach side, you look at a beach out of a window. If you are on ITC sonar, you see the bypass out of your window. Or maybe the pretty things on the swimming pool out of your window, if you're lucky enough. So what he did is that, simple, he put a camera outside the wall of each room and put a TV. And whatever is outside is beamed life on the full wall, not just a TV. So if you want to look out of the window and you don't have a window in the room, you still can see that on your wall. And then slowly that wall becomes the television. That wall becomes the video. At those days, there was a CDs and DVDs. So the innovation in technology was always there in the travel and tourism trade. Now, things have now changed so much in the last five years, I believe, that uh, it's become so much of fun, actually. So I just want to put in a couple of uh, ways that uh, technology has really taken the entire global tourism into different level today. Tourism is no more just like that going. So one of the things I think which we are using in the tourism and trends of 2020 will be, of course, the 
virtual reality, the VR, because a lot of hotels, a lot of tourism destinations, including Disney, they're all using virtual reality. A lot of airline companies, they're using virtual reality to get more business. Because once you want to see Disney, I mean, I had this personal experience in Disney in Hong Kong, and then uh, we went to Disney, so I can actually, through the VR, see exactly where am I going, where is the ticket counter, which are the rides I'm going to take, and how much is the queuing time. Of course, with the VR and all these things comes your uh, web, the presence of the internet. So I can buy my, not just my ticket to the Disneyland, but I also I can buy my meal coupons, I even get discounts after it. If I buy online, I can book my uh, taxi through Kluk and through a small number of million of apps. So sitting in Calcutta, I can almost do everything in anywhere in the world now. The most important thing in the world, according to me and according to a lot of people in the world, is, no, it's not money, it's time. Time is the single most valuable resource in everybody's life. And what we do through the tech is that we reduce our unnecessary wastage of time, and we try to utilize our time in a much more useful, much more pragmatic way. Now, apart from the VR, one of the things which I always tell to all my friends, I just want to repeat it again, is that while we are doing a lot of online bookings now, and that is one thing that has really engaged the tourism industry globally, is online. It's not just about booking about uh, hotels, it's about booking about flights, it's about booking about taxi, it's booking about your Uber from here, you can book an Uber in USA, sitting in this room for someone else. You can book your table in the best restaurant in the world, you can do wonders with that. And again, that, that is one of the biggest, biggest trends for 2020 and beyond. I mean, that has made the ease of traveling much easier and that has made the tourism, the experiencing of the tourism much more better because you are getting much more time than spending hours and hours there. One of the things which we use of IoT, the Internet of Things, is used now rapidly by a lot of airlines, including Lufthansa, is uh, tracking of your luggage. So one of the nightmares for all my friends who travel internationally, and I had this experience a few times, is your lost luggage. Been, so you, you land up in Dubai or you land up in somewhere and everybody goes off with their luggage excepting you. So you are one stupid person standing, my luggage has not arrived. And that has happened to a lot of people. So now what you can do actually, while the flight lands and with the app in Lufthansa, you go to your boarding pass and you can actually see your luggage coming. It's just like that Uber car coming to your house. So you can see your luggage going from the plane to the track to the luggage van and coming to the concourse. And that's, that's actually what life is. And so you have got peace of mind, okay, my luggage coming. So these are the things which are actually making life much more easier, that the travel trends are becoming much easier. A lot of us take these things now for granted. But if you come to think about this, these things have actually changed the way we look at the tourism industry. These things have changed the way we are going to look at the tourism industry in the future. Uh, wearable devices. We all, most of our people wear watches like this I wear, where we can get so many information apart from time, and we can use it as a smartphone or SMS, etc. But uh, like in Disney, for example, uh, you can wear this magic, magic band, which is like a wearable device, and you can actually, uh, if you are traveling with your kids, you just give them also a wearable device and exactly know where the kids are. So don't need to really say, hello, 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 where are you? Don't go away. Big place, foreign country. So there's no problem. You can track them. You can track what exactly you are. If you want to be in a right five and you are in a right three, you know how to go there. Just a small magic band. Very simple tech again. It is just like uh, 
simple technology, but it's making life of a lot of people who are traveling with family, with kids and old uh, people much easier to find out. I think um, my favorite voice. So the world is moving towards voice. Everything should be voice. I mean, for the last three years, I don't remember typing out an email. It's all been voice. So you talk and the computer types. Because we all these days type on a mobile phone, right? And it's such a big nuisance to type on these small, small things on a mobile phone. And you always make wrong mistakes while typing. So we always use voice. In fact, the voice has come to such a big, big way in the tourism industry now. So we all know about Amazon Alexa. And generally, we all use Alexa for listening to music or listening to maybe Sanjeev Kapoor's recipe or things like that, or, or booking an Uber for that matter. But actually, now uh, about 175 hotels in USA under Marriott, General Marriott groups, they are actually using Alexa for their in-room convenience. So which is actually quite exciting if you go as a traveler, especially as a tourist, as a business traveler, and you go and there's Alexa to guide you through the entire experience. We call it guest experience in a hotel. So if you say, Alexa, set up the temperature at 24 degree, yes, it is set up. Temperature set up at 24 degree. It's Alexa, I'm hungry. Could you please order some room service, some grill sandwich? Room, room service activated. Grill sandwich ordered. $10.2 ETA, 25 minutes. So you don't need to really go and open the guy who brings a sandwich to your room also. You can say, Alexa, please open the door. And your door opens, and the room service guys come with your sandwich. And you are still in your bed. And then you tell your TV to open up a particular channel, whether it's a CNN and BBC, and say, Alexa, put on a BBC 4, and you are on BBC 4 or I put, I put on my cricket match between India and Australia, and you are on. So that's, that's very easy again, but the tech is like uh, driving the entire tourism travel industry to a different, different uh, league altogether. So it's visual, it's artificial intelligence in a very, very uh, high volume. And I think this is going to be the, these are the major trends for 2020 and beyond where these trends, along with the ones that we are bringing in all over the world, will make travel easier, travel secure, and travel safer. Also, to add on the payment, as we all know, the payment gateways have now become very secure with the internet, with the technology, with the e-secure. You can pay your credit card. I think a few years back, a lot of my own friends used to say, oh, should I use the credit card in the internet? It's not going to scam. Nobody will be able to take money from my card. Those days are over history, I believe. Now it's uh, absolutely e-secure, uh, so you can use your credit card anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter. So your payment is secure. You are so much uh, risk-free in the, your payment. So it's much more safer travel. Environment, yes. It's a, again, I think environment is one of the major things that a tech is driving. I think for those who really care for environment, I think technology is the only way that we can create the environmental tourism and make tourism and the world a better place. So uh, I think my 10 minutes up. Uh, so uh, I think these are the, some of the very interesting things, uh, exciting times ahead actually for all those like people like me who wants to go out, eat. Oh yeah, yeah, food. How can I finish without food? So uh, food, I think my favorite for all of us sitting here. So, so how technology has made eating out in restaurants so cool, so fantastic. Like, like it's now quite common in most of the hotel and restaurant where you can actually, instead of that traditional menu card, you get a small uh, iPad kind of a notebook. Now, the thing is that I have myself worked on this. Uh, if you are ordering a pizza for the matter or for whatever, you actually get the 50 pictures of pizza with different toppings, which you could never really explain to a waiter. Because it's a communication problem. That if you say something else, the waiter will bring something else. The chef don't understand what the waiter says. So at the end of it, you get a wrong pizza. 
So here you actually get 50 kinds of pizza with the recipe, ingredients, toppings, choice of toppings. It's almost like a Subway thing, which you order a Subway sandwich from Swiggy. So you can actually choose your bread, choose your uh, sauce, choose your chicken or turkey or beef. And that exactly, directly from your table goes to the chef, to a, what you call KOT, kitchen order ticket. So chef knows that in table number 24, Dr. Bose is going to order this, 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 exactly. No waiter interference. And you get exactly what you want to eat. And if you run out of your wine, or if you run out of, out of your water, you don't need to really say hello, hello, hello anymore. Again, come and go to a wine and say refill. The moment you give refill on the small notebook, the bar counter gets a beep. The table number 24 needs a refill of the red wine. And the guy comes, a barman, and gives you, sir, some red wine. Yes, please. So see how life experience of the customer, the guest experience in a restaurant, hotel, bar, travel destinations have become much more easier and safer. It's exciting times. Enjoy travel. Enjoy your food. I think technology is really driving the industry, and that these are the basic, basic trends which we can see for the next few years. Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. For, thanks for being so patient. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thank sir. You. May I request you to kindly remain on stage for just a couple of more minutes. Thank you, sir, for that very, very interesting uh, session on traveling trends for 2020. You're making this even more exciting. May I request Mr. K.K. Mahapatra, head Infocom, ABB Private Limited, to kindly come forward and present a memento to Dr. Suborna Bose. And a big round of applause for Dr. Suborna Bose for this very interesting session. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.